It is 7 p.m. and we will open the regularly scheduled meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals for Orion Township at this time. Please call the roll. Andrew? Here. John Walker? Here. Mike Flood? Here. Tony Cook? Here. Diane Danaskis? Here. Thank you. Next, we have election of officers for the coming year. Anybody care to make a motion? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Flood? I would move to uh, nominate Dan Durham for chairperson for the ZBA for the calendar year of 2022. Also, the nominations be closed and a unanimous ballot be cast. Or moved by Mr. Flood, supported by Mr. Cook. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Sounded unanimous. Thank you. Um, next, we have the vice chair. Let me continue on. Please. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I would move to uh, nominate uh, board member Tony Cook to serve as the vice chairperson for the ZBA for the calendar year 2022 and move that the nominations be closed and unanimous ballot be cast. Support. Moved and supported. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is unanimous. Mr. Cook will be vice chair. And next we have secretary. Mr. Chairman. I would move to nominate Diane Danaskis as our secretary for the ZBA for the calendar year of 2022 and move also the nominations be closed, unanimous ballot be cast. I'll support, I'll support or Mr. Walker, <laughs> the two of us. You can. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. That is motion passed and it was again unanimous. Thank you. We will move along with the minutes of the 13th of December meeting, but before we do, um, you've seen, I'm sure, in your information, they were having some difficulty tweaking the um, recording equipment, and basically what the mo uh, information I got said is that they did the very best they could and believed that they got what needed to be gotten, but it may not be to the every period and T-cross that we're used to. Understanding that... Does anybody have any major concerns they'd like to get going? I don't have anything. When I heard that, quite honestly, I stopped looking because they know there's a problem and they're working to fix it. My main concern is that the, how the motions were passed and everything looked good. Okay. To me. So do we have a motion to accept? So moved. I'll support. Move my Ms. Naska supported by myself. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed, and let's move down to agenda review and approval. Um, first case is, and I'm going to read it into the record, although there's going to probably be some changes after we do that. It is case AB 2021-55, Tim Peterson, vacant parcel 09-20-256. Dash 012 East of 2585 Browning, postponed from November 22nd, 2021. Petitioner was seeking or is seeking three variances from Zoning Ordinance 78, Article 6, Section 6.04, Zoned R2. Number one is a 9.73 foot front yard setback from the required 35 feet to build a house, 25.27 feet from the front property line. Number two is a rear yard setback variance from the required 35 feet to build a house 22.15 feet from the property line. And Article 27, Section 27 point 2702, A8, buildings, structures, and uses for lot size up to a half acre. Number three, the variance was an 1146 foot square foot variance from the allowed 1150 for a total maximum of a floor area of all accessory buildings to construct a 1484 square foot attached garage and 812 square foot attached accessory building for a total of 2296 square feet, total maximum floor area of all accessory buildings. Do we happen to have a um, applicant for this tonight. Okay. 
Good evening. My name is Joe Latosis with Design House Architecture. On here on behalf of Mr. and Mrs. Peterson, uh, they're unable to make it this evening. I do remember seeing your name. Um, before we go too far forward, let's get this part off here. We asked, and board, please back me up if I am mistaken. The last time, were you here physically the last time this came up? I was not here at the November meeting, but I was at the October meeting. Okay. We asked, we being the board, asked for some specialized opinion um, from the county attorney about the specifics of this. Mm -hmm. And it is my reading of this that the board has basically no standing in this that the deed restrictions will be what you're required to follow. Okay. In addition, he reduced voluntarily some of the size restrictions that he was looking for. Correct. And again, that would, from what I read here, that would make it pretty much a non-issue for this board. Board members, please. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, just to confirm, the the uh, setbacks laid forth in the deed restrictions are the setbacks that we can move forward with, correct? Yes. If somebody's got the memo right in front of them, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead with it and let him know what, if you would, please. This is based on a consent judgment. Keating International Corporation and the Township of Orion dated June 26, 1978, before the Oakland County Circuit Judge Court. Uh, they agreed with the uh, language that the front setback for lots 1 through 64 may be reduced to 25 feet, and lots number 8 and 9 rear setbacks may be reduced to 20 feet. And that was based on a court uh, settlement back in 1978. Uh, eight. What I have here is no variance is needed and the setbacks can be administratively approved for the revised plans, date stamp November 17th, 2021. Those plans show a 25.27 foot front yard setback and a 22.15 foot rear yard setback and a reduction to the attached accessory structures to be within the Township Zoning Ordinance 78 speculate, uh, specification. Is that the information that you have? Yes. So with that, we... Well, let's... We send to the question. Request. We need a motion to essentially take this off the record, or he didn't need to come, and but we... Let's go. So I rescind my application for a variance. Okay. Let's... Somebody please with a motion to allow him to pull that. I like clarification on number three on the accessory buildings. Uh, from my understanding through our attorney, that has been reduced now where it's in compliance with the ordinance. Correct. That correct. Okay, that that's I just want a clarification on that. Thank you. I'll prepare to make a motion if you please. Want. In the matter of uh, ZBA AB 2021-55, Tim Peterson, vacant parcel 0920-256-012, east of 2585 Browning, I would move that per the township attorney's opinion, no variance is needed, and the setbacks can be administratively approved for the revised plans date stamped November 17, 2021. Those plans showed a 25.27 foot front yard setback, a 22.1 foot rear yard setback, and a reduction to the attached accessory structures to be within the Township Zoning Ordinance number 78 specifications. Okay, before we go for a second, we have public. I did not request. We have somebody that would like to speak on this matter before we go any further. Please uh, come up, please. 
Identify yourself and tell us what's on your mind. I apologize for not getting to you first. No problem. This is Barb Schalk, again from 2590 Browning. And just, Mr. Flood just said something. I do not believe that the rulings that were just approved by the legal for deed restrictions impact article number three or request number three. Number one and number two for the front and rear yard setbacks were definitely included, but no set of plans now have been approved for the building for the step number three with the garage uh, reduction. Well, the KHA board rescinded the approval of the initial plans and they have not approved any other plans that have been submitted. Beca so, because there's been no pro uh, plans approved? Right. Um, he doesn't, he withdraws and walks out tonight. He lives with what the ordinance gives him. But he, nothing gets approved for accessory buildings. And no, there's been no change. That's, we well, you, that's the thing. You say there's no change. None of us are aware of him not changing the accessory buildings to be the 2,256, uh, 96 square feet of accessory building. It was scaled back, and he will be required to stay within ordinance requirements. Okay. Thank you. Ma'am? Wallen. I am live at 2596 Browning. I guess that was the confusion as well. Our KHA board did not approve his first plan that was submitted, nor the second plan that was submitted in November. So I guess that was just clarifying the confusion that he, right now he has no approval for any plans. Um, I am assuming you are just granting the front and your rear yard setback and you're, there is nothing required by this board. Um, the deed restrictions that go with the property will have to be adhered to. Okay. So the front and yard, yard setback, front and rear yard setback, and the township's existing rule of no more than 1,150 square feet and a three-stall garage because that's all the township approves. I don't have those numbers in front of me, but if you tell me it's 1150, then that's what it is. Okay. There won't be a foot over township. Okay. Um, and he would have ordinance. to go back to our KHA board with a drawing. I can't speak to boards or homeowners associations. We don't involve in those. Okay. Um, all I know is this board is, he's walking out of here with nothing granted by this board. Um, our opinion that we required said he doesn't need anything granted by this board. Okay. So we are officially. I believe we are on the same page. Well, we're officially on the sidelines now. You know, as far as your boards and things in your neighborhood, that would be up to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further by the board? All right, we have a motion on the floor, no support. Support. Okay, we have motion by Mr. Flood, supported by Mr. Walker. Please call the roll. Mike Flood? Yes. Don Walker? Yes. Tony Cook? Yes. Diane Danaskis? Yes. Dan Durham? Yes. Okay. Are you in agreement with what you heard here? Yes. Very good. Have Thank a good day. Much. Have a good evening. Okay, where am I now? I started moving stuff around. That's where I get in trouble. There it is. Okay, for reasons that we've discussed previously, we've seen this next case come in front of us. Uh, first of all, do we have an applicant for the next case? Um, James Garris on Conklin Road. That's not you folks? Put him to the back of the bus and see if, okay. In that case, we'll move that case to the back of the agenda and we will take case that was going to be number C next. AB 2022-01, Linda Engelbrandt, 2957 Walmsley Circle, Sedwell 09-20-380-011. Petitioner is seeking three variances from zoning ordinance 78, zoned R2. 
Article 27, Section 27.02A4, and Article 27, Section 27.05H2. Number one, the front yard, the 80, 35 rather foot front yard setback variance from the required 35 feet to erect the privacy fence six foot, a six foot privacy fence zero feet from the property line along Walden Road. And number two, a 10 foot side yard setback variance from the required 10 foot to erect a six foot privacy fence zero feet from the side property line to the east. And number three, a 10 foot side yard setback variance from the required 10 foot to erect a six foot privacy fence zero feet from the side property line to the west. Would the applicant please step forward, introduce yourself and give us a rundown on what you'd like to do and why you'd like to do it. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for having us here. Um, our house is directly across the street from the strip mall. Ma'am, you are your name? Oh, sorry, Linda Engelbrandt. And I live at that address, 2957 Walmsley. Thank you. Basically, we want the fence for a modicum of privacy. Um, we have a bike path behind us that has constant traffic on it that starts early in the morning and it goes until 11, after 11 o'clock at night, I've seen walkers back there. We have trash that blows in our yard constantly from the strip mall. We have <clears throat> people cutting through our yard to go across to the strip mall. We can't use our patio in the summer because of the traffic noise. It is, you can't hear yourself talk out there. It's constant and it backs up during business hours of, um, well, five o'clock traffic, that type of thing. And also lines up it when church gets out, the church down the street from us lines up um, when it gets busy at the roundabout, we have traffic backed up. And also we have a lot of 18 wheelers that go through there, uh, delivering to all the stores in the strip mall, which creates a lot of noise. Um, the exit to the strip mall is directly across from my family room door wall. So when you're sitting in the family room, all winter long, all I see are headlights coming out of that parking lot and it's constant. It goes on quite a bit. The trucks are seven days a week. They're from early morning till late at night. We also hear the snow plows over there. Um, and in the summer they have the parking lot cleaned and that can be at three o'clock in the morning that they have it cleaned. That creates a lot of noise for us. I think I've covered everything. One question for me. Mm -hmm. um, was the dimension, the rear dimension of your property affected by the construction of the roundabout? No. No. That's farther down from us. It's about five houses down from us. Thank you. Question by the board. What structures do you currently have on the, um, the side facing Walden? What current barriers or structures do you have there, plants? Vegetation you mean across the back where we want to put the fence. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of vegetation I still have a little but unfortunately my homeowners association hired somebody to come in and quote clear the brush and they cut everything down And there's no fence currently a split rail fence that's falling apart You know, it's been there since the subdivision was I don't built know if you have the picture that we sent yeah. Have you considered a shorter fence, a four foot, because you would not need any kind of approval for a four foot? We would still have all the walkers looking right in my house. If you <coughs> look at the driveway coming out of the strip mall, mm -hmm. it goes like this. When the cars come up like that, they're over six foot. Headlights shining right straight in our family room. I've got pictures. I, I thought I had a picture there. Thank you. We have pictures in our packet. One of them did show a clear shot of the strip mall taken from your backyard. That's from my family room. We 
would you consider replacing vegetation, which is visually as well as a sound barrier? Go ahead. I'm sorry. We have done that. Uh -huh. um, there, the problem with it is we have other trees that are deciduous. Well, in the summer, the, the evergreens don't grow back there. And it took me 20 years to get it built up before that was all cut down. And I don't have 20 years to live, so <laughs> I kind of like something. <laughs> okay, thank you. You look, I planted that one tree. That picture was what, Ron, I planted that tree. Well, that's not the first tree I put in there. That's a, I had a blue spruce in there before, it lasts about five or six years, it died. There's too much shade. If you look behind, between our house and a road, there's a half a dozen walnut trees that are huge. They're 30, 60 feet high, pushed out. There's so much shade there, I cannot grow anything. When they strip, when they cut all that brush down, they planted, they brought it, gave us some trees. They all died too. They planted them, probably 30 of them between our neighbor and the canal. There's not one living today. All died. Got to have sun. Got to have sun. And my, I've got big trees there also, so they're also shaded. So if you look at those bushes that are on the left of the, my tree, they were there when we moved in there. And you can see how big they are. They will not grow there. There's not enough sun. A question for our building department official. Yes. What's to prevent a person, and I've seen this done, putting any two foot berm in and putting a four foot fence on top of that? There's your six feet. Now, it depends, you know, if it causes drainage issues for another adjacent property. But yeah, that that is things that can be done. Nothing in our ordinance would uh, prohibit that. You know, it would. They would, the berm would have to be a, all on their property, so they would lose some of the. It wouldn't. The fence wouldn't be on the property line, so to speak, because you'd have to berm it up, right? So, but there's nothing to stop that. If you leave it a couple of feet shorter, then yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's bad. Someone. No has different to... than somebody putting in a berm to put shrubbery in, right? right. You know, if they're just putting a fence on it. The same same thing as yeah same kind trouble yeah yeah I've had numerous people come up and ask me that I said oh, check with the building department yeah well you know when we do that we just make sure that they're not you know creating drainage issues for adjacent properties yeah typically along a rear line of property there's usually a drainage easement or in the side yard too you know so something that has to be taken into account thank thank you mm -hmm. just thinking out of the box sometimes that works. Yeah, I got a couple of neighbors who have done that. They got denied and they put the berm in and left a four-footer on it to cure the problem. Was their berm all made out of dirt? Uh, one guy put in uh, uh, shredded tires. No weeds. Yeah, that's a good and, thing uh, too. And he, he, he was having trouble with the erosion. And once he did that, took care of it. A good use of it. Mr. Chair? Mr. Walker, uh, how long have you folks lived there? Uh, 38 years. Since 1984. Okay. And there's been a lot of changes since 1984. And they've all been bad for us. That was a feel. Let you know I moved here in 1988, so I and understand what's happened there, here. The only paved portion of that road was a mile behind us. From there to 24 was gravel, so there was no traffic that cut through there. Now it's constant traffic cuts through there. I don't want to say it's progress, but that's what somebody will tell yeah. you. <laughs> you know, change is good unless it happens to you. Right. <laughs> yeah. I live off another one of those crossroads like, like Walden, so I, f I feel your pain. I do. Uh, but your request is for a, a fence around the sides, too. Not no, 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 no. I don't know how that got in I, there. That wasn't... I, a I'm sorry. No fighting. No. If you keep well, continuing the way to fight, there'll be no dessert for dinner. We <laughs> only want a fence across the back. Okay, the way it's it was not, explained not on the sides. to me, not on the sides, but Although the way she explained it to me, 
Okay. We had to have a 10 that variance because of our neighbor, the lot line where our neighbor is. That's what was said to me. Yeah, it's so because the fence would be within the 10 foot because side. Because the end of the fence Usually is, yeah. we touch on that in the motion. Okay. And uh, it's only. Yeah, we don't want to come up at all. You're just looking for the. Just straight across the, the back. Yep. Now, you know, you could, put, you could put a six foot fence in, but you couldn't put it on the property line. You know that. No, no, I no, was told I couldn't because we're not going to put it on. We can't put it on a property line because of all the trees back there. It's going to be inside a little so bit. So we either have but, but like three feet. Yeah. Well, but how inside. far back would that? Ten foot. You can put it ten, if it's within it, ten foot of your in your property. You don't require a variance. Ten feet inside the property line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thirty five feet. That no. far in. These are both considered front yard setbacks. Oh, they are. Oh, my bad. Thank you, Mike. Thirty five feet. That. Yeah. Yep. That's unfortunately it's a front. That's the, that's the problem when you get these properties on two frontages. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, that if that's the case, you know, the petitioner may request lessen in the variance from the property line because you can't put it on the property line anyway. So, yeah, that's the same case we had before with the, with the one further down mm -hmm. uh, where the answer is to the Kennington. Uh, Subdivision or uh, condos. I have a question also. Condos. You know, we've been fighting this for 20 years trying to get something back there. And they kept, first they kept telling us, no fences, no fences, no fences. So we said, I tried all I could to manage it back there until they did the clear cut. <clears throat> then all of a sudden this year I'm driving down Baldwin. And down Baldwin there's a fence all the way along there. And they told us that we couldn't do it. I believe your HOA just lessened that rule to because of the construction on the Baldwin Road. The HOA didn't allow them originally, if I remember correctly, and now they're allowing them because of that. That's correct. Yeah, we had to. I had to get the okay from them before I came to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But every one of those homeowners came and stood where you are, and requested. Well, it was in another building then, but uh, requested variances like you're doing now. And we encouraged all of them to think of alternate things that they might try. And as the gentleman just stated, you could see that they weren't real successful thinking of alternate ideas. Let me ask you this, since we're just talking. Do you like the look of that strip as you come down Baldwin? When you're driving down and you look over there at that row of fences? Well, most of them, that the fence is inside, you can hardly see it anyway. So it, Are you asking us if we like the fence along Baldwin? Yep. Doesn't bother me at all. So you don't see that and say it looks like a concentration camp in there? Nope. Okay. Frankly, as far as I'm concerned, this should have been done when the strip mall was put in. There should have been something done at that time. And it wasn't. I mean, that was before you were here, I'm sure. But that's when it should have been done. There was some discussion about moving the fence in, and you're saying that it can't be put on the rear property line anyway, right? It has to come in a little bit, yeah. Okay. And so do you have how far in that would be? Do you know that? Is it three or four feet? About four feet. The only th thing I have to worry about there, there's a cable line that runs across the back, my backyard. Now, when I planted, put that tree in there, we had it, Miss Dig come out and spot everything. So I generally know pretty much where it is. But I, we would have them come out again to check that. But uh, that's my only, I'm not sure exactly where I can put it until I get that determined. But it would be inside our existing trees there. But, you know, that, that, Cable is the factor. It's as about to where four exactly. Feet. I could put it. What type of cable is it? Do you know? Comcast cable. Okay. Okay. So it's not a. It's not anything to do with a utility easement or something like that. Well, it's not there's, an easement. There's a six foot easement back there. Oh, okay. You, Behind the split rail fence, there's an easement. Uh, no, between that and the safety path. A yard. Correct. Six feet outside of the split rail fence towards no, the safety path or inside. towards your property. 
And it's six feet between your fence and the walk. And the, and the walk? And the path, right? Something like that, yes. Okay, so it's, it's not on your property? Well, yes, it is. Okay, well, let's... Got a, you can't build anything inside of a, an easement. You, can, right. you cannot put anything inside of an easement. You couldn't put the fence inside the easement. That's right. I see. You got a, on both sides, Wansley and Walden, six feet, five feet. I know how Wansley. Yeah, that must be a water main. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the easement is on on your side. Okay. You got six feet there. So what is it off the property line? Well, you couldn't put it in. You couldn't put it on the property line anyway. It'd be on the easement. <laughs> you have to be six feet. Six, six feet inside his, his property line to stay out of the easement, according to his uh, survey there. So that's a water line. It's not fiber optic or anything. No, water line's on the front. On the, front. the only yeah. thing back there is the TV cable that runs in there. The uh, other utility cables are outside the property line, outside the fence. So to be considered, what would this variance have to say because of the, the, uh, the easement? 29 feet. So you would be four feet from the edge of the easement into your yard? No. No. I'm from the fence, which is fence is on the property line. He's been six feet inside his inside property line. Fence, though. Okay, so, so clarify for me. Here is the bike path or walking path. There are six feet. At the end of that six feet is the fence. Correct? Here's the walk. Here's the easement. Six foot wide easement? Uh, no, the easement is on the other side of the fence in his backyard. Where he's asking for the, asking for the variance. Six foot is in his right backyard. How how wide is the easement? Six overall? feet in his if, backyard. If I recall from what I saw, his fence is is at the other side of the easement on because it's right not right next to the path. It's no, there is an easement between the split rail fence and the path, and then there's another easement before the road. Another yes. So he's, he's his fence isn't. Well, regardless, if, if he yeah. if he is in violation, that's their problem, yeah. not ours. Yeah. <laughs> We don't, okay. you know, as far as easements go, I guess, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah, but all trees are in that easement. Yeah. I'm curious if we should approve or disapprove, I mean, particularly approve, anything that we know puts him in a violation of an easement. Because if it, they blow a water main, they all come down there and dig it up. Whatever was there won't be there then. What kind of easement was it? The water mains are all in the front, in front of the house. This is basically the back. They call it the front because of Walden Road. Can I but see it's the back of the house. Can I see that? Uh, uh, oh, Dave's there, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the water mains five feet and the cable six feet. Oh. Yeah, and you said how the trees are in there? Yes. Probably a utility easement. That whole thing, all those trees are on the easement. That old thing back there is on the easement. Every backyard has huge trees and they're all in the easement. So where do we go next? Well, the fact is, you yes. know, it's a homeowner responsibility. If, if anybody ever needs to get into that easement and use it, you know, that it would be removed at their cost. So. Um, typically, if it's not a drainage easement, which I don't believe it is, um, it's a utility easement, then you just want to make sure that Miss Digg's out there. You know? Um, you say the only it is only six foot. Our property is that cable line. It is six foot, and if he's saying he's already four feet from the line, I think it would be prudent of us to just make sure he's six foot, because the easement's not an issue at all. 
That's up to the board here. Right. Somebody sharper with math than me, how would, we, how would we amend this and see if the applicant is amendable to doing it? It would be a... Um, how did they deal with that along Baldwin? Sure you had the same situation along Baldwin. They, if I'm not mistaken, only had one front yard to... Well, they didn't, most of them didn't even have a front yard. They're all in the backyard. That fence is in what you may call front yard because it faces Baldwin, but that's their backyard. Hmm. And I'm sure there's an easement that goes along there. Because I'm sure there's power lines and, you know, it's all underground cable that power stuff there. Now, this is the first time I've heard of it myself. Some of the other board members may yeah. have. First well, I'm Very sure they had the same problem. Hopefully they did their misdigs. If there's something back there. All right, where were we headed? It'd be 29. 29 foot front yard setback variance from required 35. Mm -hmm. And the other two would be the same. It'd be 10 foot and 10 foot. Mr. Nassis? Question on the two side ones. Wouldn't those remain the same because all you're saying is that that fence ends at the end of their property? So would those remain the same? Yes, Diane. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. sure. mm -hmm. The only thing that would change is the 29 front yard setback variance from the required 35. To the the previous said six foot. Because the, they call it a front yard because there's Walden Road. It's a main road. She explained this to me when I was came in at the beginning. And I filled out all the forms. We, we basically have two front yards is what they're saying. Yeah, typically a rear yard setback for a fence is 10 feet. So being that you have two front yards, this does affect you. So what would you think if your request was amended to a 29 yard front foot, a 25 nine foot front yard setback variance to erect a six foot privacy fence, privacy fence zero feet from the property line? Six feet. 60. Six feet. So 20. Six feet. Yes, exactly. Six feet. Okay, cool. And the others still stay the same? Yes. Okay. What it would do for you is you would be dropping it back six feet off your property line <clears throat> if you were successful. So that's it's a couple feet off of where we're watering it. Because you have a couple of options. The first option you have is to request a vote on exactly what you brought in here tonight when you came. You can tell us, yes, we want this or nothing. And some people will agree to tune it in a little bit because they don't want to risk a hard no then your other option would be to go with a minor but acceptable change suggested by this board that would be smaller, not larger. We can't go larger. If it were acceptable to you, you could request a vote on that. But it's purely up to you. I'm not sure until I measured it out. We'll see what happens. That, uh, that cable is my only factor I'm concerned about. Now what happens if we if we do come in and that's where the cable is? is that's, I'm not, I'm, that's a possibility. Is that something we should check on and then maybe come back to you? That would probably be the safest way. It seems like we've been moving an awful lot of cases back from the time we get them, but they've gone out when they do come back in. Everybody at least knows the same information. So you can request that the board move to bring you back at a date certain. It, I'm not sure I saw the paper, Mr. 
Uh, I don't mean to interrupt, but no. sometimes, you know, old easements like this, if you look at to the deeds, sometimes they're abandoned. And being that there's so many trees and whatnot in there, there you, you never know. I'm just saying that's another option. You go to Oakland County, sometimes easements, old easements like that, that weren't used. This was used for a cable line maybe, but sometimes they get abandoned after a time. One question that you've... And maybe I'm the only one up here not clear about it. You mentioned a cable line. A cable line from pole to pole or buried underground? Buried underground. underground. Okay, fiber optic then. Yeah. Thank you. Underground, yeah. That tells me what I need to know. On your property, though, not on the easement, correct? Correct. On our property. Yeah. Or close to that easement line, I'm not sure. <clears throat> Thank you. They just one of those dig things that went in. I watched to put the cable in. Mm -hmm. you know, it's one of those arms that go down and cut the cable and, and lay the cable. <clears throat> so it's, if it is fiber optic, they can run an amazing amount of things through one fiber optic line. Mm -hmm. Somebody cut that, you might take out cable for the entire subdivision. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Wouldn't be too popular. A few angry people. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we call them a stick. <laughs> Mr. Cook. Okay. Just no, I know you mentioned that you were going to go back and do some, some measuring. And the other thing I would like you guys to look at is coming 10 feet off of the, um, the property line, just in your measurements and determining what you want to come back with, because um, that will put you back into the range where if you didn't have the two front yards, then you wouldn't need to be here. And so it gives us a little bit more to work with, okay? All right. The problem, if I come 10 feet in from the property line, I lose half my backyard. And that's the thing. Measure because you've already got the six that you've come in, so it's another four feet. Okay. I still question how they got away with it on Baldwin. I'm sure they had the same thing. Anybody that remembers that those Baldwin houses have two front yards? Yes. I did not remember that. No. Yes. That's a good question. Same as we are. It's Baldwin same, same instead road. of Baldwin. Baldwin is a primary road. Hmm? This is backing up. Baldwin Road's a secondary. Okay. Baldwin's primary. What is the secondary? Baldwin is a cross secondary. We have a lot of those places were way north of Baldwin that got the fences. Yeah, and it's long Baldwin. Long they but they, weren't, but they weren't on Baldwin. They were on Baldwin. Mm -hmm. Baldwin is a primary road. Yes, I get that completely. Yeah. Baldwin is considered a. Secondary. secondary. So road. that's probably in their favor because of the traffic. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. 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 I mean, each, each, each case is built on its own merit. Okay. We had a gentleman come in not too long ago that wanted one further down on Walden Road. What would you like us to do? I, I think I would like to check this out a little bit more and come back. We can't do anything until the spring, basically. Um, there is that. Yeah, I, there certainly isn't a rush to get at the approval. So I would like to go out and do some more measuring. I'd have, I'll have somebody come in and tell us where the cable is so we know where that's at. Make them flag it. That's probably for your own benefit. That's probably the best course. But again, you don't have to do it, but I think it's wise. Do you agree with that? Yeah, we were going to do that anyway. I mean, coming back. Coming back, yes. Okay. All right, so we're good? Well, we got to make a motion and get it approved or not. You want a date certain or? Date certain would be good, then they wouldn't have to re-advertise, correct? What we're looking for is what we call a date certain, and we can give you the date now if we can get a hold of it. Okay. And that will also prevent you from having to re-advertise and any more fees for this. <clears throat> I didn't see a memo. So you have uh, January 24th, which has no cases on it right now, so assuming that was going to be canceled. You have February 14th, which is Valentine's Day, or February 28th. January 24th was the first? Yeah, there's no cases on there. Um, there was a consideration. Uh, of those I, that's, that's my granddaughter's tight. birthday. I can't do okay. that one. <laughs> yeah. 14th is our anniversary. Okay, okay so that... But 28th. February 28th would be February 28th. Let's go for that one. I hate to put it off that long, but. Well, 
you should be maybe getting a little bit of a break in the weather and you'll be ready to move sooner. So I think that's probably good if you <clears throat> push it up too fast, getting somebody to come out and do it. You're giving okay. yourself some time. All right, great, thank you. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll, I'm prepared to make a motion. Then. Mr. Floyd. Uh, we're gonna make a motion for you and then thank you. get in the record. And a matter of uh, AB, in case AB 2022-01, Linda C. Uh, Engelbrandt? Correct. 2957 Wamsley Circle, Sidwell number 0920-380-011, at the petitioner's request to postpone until February 28th, 2022. I'll support. Support. Uh, moved by Mr. Flood, supported by myself. Please call the roll. Tony Cook? Yes. Mike Flood? Yes. Diane Danaskis? Yes. Don Walker? Yes. Dan Durham? Yes. Most secure. See you in February. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. And I want to tell you, the ladies in your planning office are really nice to work with. Mm -hmm. I've talked to them on the phone a few times and been in, and they were all very pleasant. Very nice. We'll let them know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Since we're still in cases, what's the board's pleasure as far as 2021-57 goes? This is, by my count, the third time yes. that this hasn't worked. Yeah, and I thought we discussed last time that if they didn't appear this time that we should really drop it, that it should be removed, and they can reapply. Is that a motion? Well, I'm just throwing it up. You make that a motion? <laughs> yes, she is. Sure. I'll second sure. that. <laughs> Any discussion? Jay, more for done. <laughs> we have a motion on the floor to essentially remove case 2021-57. From consideration, as this is the third time we've not been able to see it, and there was no warning that I received any notice of. And the motion was by Mrs. Danaskis and seconded by Mr. Flood. Please call the roll. Diane Danaskis? Yes. Tony Cook? I have a question. <laughs> Please. Don Walker? Yes. Mike Flood? Yes. Dan Durham? Yes. Can I make a, a, a point now? Certainly. I believe if we look at our bylaws, I think that might be following our bylaws. Okay. I didn't bring them with me, but I'm pretty sure. Can I ask a question? Please. I don't even know if this is... So I'm thinking about the petitioner for the six-foot fence and the one we had a few couple months ago petitioning, and I'm looking along Walden, that whole corridor where the subdivision is, I miss, was it, what was it built in 1970? 1970s. 70s. 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the fences have deteriorated beyond usefulness. The, the, the greenery is just patchy. Some of it's there, some of it's not. It's, do we or does anyone ever ask the township board if there's a solution for the corridor to make it to, to, to I mean, that road has changed a lot in the last 40 years. Is, what's the process for saying perhaps it's time to look at that from a township perspective and see if something can be done to remediate the problem and really you know, make the whole area a little more attractive from the road perspective, not just the, the residents' perspective. I'm just throwing out there, because I don't know. I believe Mr. Flood would probably know the path to something like that better than any of the rest of us. We, when we had our joint meeting mm -hmm. with all the planning commission, ZBA, and quarter improvement authority and everything, we, there's a subcommittee set up I know I'm on it. Joanne Van Tassel is the chairperson. I think Tony Kirby is on it with us. And is there one more person? Kirk Larson, our code enforcer is on it. Oh, Kirk, Kirk Larson from the code enforcer. We had one meeting. Subsequently, since then, we have never had another meeting dealing with the six-foot fence uh, in our ordinance. So that, that's been, it's at that step right now. Wouldn't that be... Some uh, HOA would go through a site plan for Don? Yes. To go to the PC to amend their site plan to include a fence along some 
area. They, 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 they would, but, but I'm, the, I'm, I'm, the, Diane, I'm the tree guy around here, and, and I've always said the alt, there's an alternative to those fences. There is. I, I, I feel for these people, I do, but if you planted the right shrubs with the right trees, I don't think there'd be a problem. Actually, I totally agree with you. That's what my question was to raise. Right. Can we do something different to remediate the problem of the sound and the visual without having to go through requests for six-foot fences? I agree with you totally. But I'm looking at it. Is it is it a township problem? Is it a is it the homeowners association problem? I think it's it's, 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 it's just the been let go problem. for forty years. It's the citizens' problem. But, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear you agree with me. Not everybody agrees with no, me I on do. this subject. I do. And sometimes I feel I'm, I'm a, a voice crying in the wilderness. No, I agree with you, but I also agree. But it's, it's a difficult thing. Yeah. Well, sometimes, you know, we do get complaints about a site plan that, from a buffer standpoint, that a tree dies or two trees die, and then it doesn't create a buffer between a residential zoned area and a commercial zoned area. So we have to go out and actually tell them you're in violation of your site plan, you need to replace these two trees. So uh, there could be something as easy as proactive code enforcement to make sure that their site plans are the way they were intended to be when they were installed. One thing I noticed when, uh, when you were doing our planning uh, is when we put our commercial developments, uh, which abut up to a residential, we make sure that those or have, have the walls or fences and sh shrubbery for sound abatement and stuff like that. The problem we have here is an older established yes. community that was built back in the 60s and 70s in that, in that location. Uh, and I'm on record, it's in the, it's in the minutes, I, I'm not afraid to put it on the, on the record, uh, that it was going to look like Fort Apache all the way along Baldwin yeah. Road, all the way down the Jasmine. Absolutely. And, and it, it's, a, it's a bad problem. And I, I feel for the residents. I mean, it's almost like we opened up this Pandora's box and, mm -hmm. and well, I, there you go. I'm a firm believer in deferred maintenance being budgeted in and that you don't come to the hit when you hit, you're hit with it and then you got to do something <clears> about it. That it's natural that these things are going to occur when a community is growing. And isn't there some way to build in, either, I don't know if it's the, in the homeowners association that has to do it or the township or whatever, so that every 15 or 20 years you do go back in and remediate the problem in those areas because they're, nobody's responsible for them. Nobody takes care of them. The homeowners aren't responsible. The township doesn't do anything. It's, a, it's kind of a dead man's zone in terms of care and maintenance, and there just seems that there should be a better plan for that eventuality, because it is going to happen eventually. I mean, we do have a tree ordinance, but that's mainly for replacing trees that commercial yeah. builders are going to yeah. knock down, and yeah. but maybe we could amend that ordinance in some fashion to say that, that, that somehow the, the first line of Sound deadening should be natural veget. I passed out an article from a magazine a year mm -hmm. or two ago mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. in England this is what they do. They, yeah. they they don't they outlaw fences. That you can't have fences, and they get different kinds of shrubs and things. That's a little, a little, uh, little over the top, I, I suppose. But but the idea is there, and, and maybe if we said to to put it in that tree ordinance when, mm -hmm. when if the noise gets too bad or the first line of of thinking should be natural vegetation of some sort, if that's possible. And at least make it more difficult to just to come in, because just like the, the couple today, you back that fence up, oh no, then I have to lose my yard. Well, you, you, so they want everything. They want the yard, and they want the fence, they want no noise. What we all want, we all, what we all want, but sometimes you gotta, you gotta work it out somehow. Along those lines, you, you are were talking about alternatives to two six-foot fences and the following with what, what Mr. Walker was saying is that if there should be an option when someone goes in and say, I want a six-foot fence, well, have you considered and then literally create a list of recommended um, trees or shrubs mm -hmm. that would be alternatives. That way they're not going out to whatever 
um, garden center they decide to and then trying to figure it out. They've already got a short list of these grow well in this zone, in this region, in these types of soil. Which ones are shade tolerant, which ones require lots of sun. So I think that would be a great alternative because when we end up <clears throat> disapproving, then people are still in the same spot mm -hmm. before they began. Mm -hmm. yeah. They have no information. They can't give them an, al an alternative. So I think that would be worth creating. The, the maintenance of it, though, would ultimately have to rest with the homeowner? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because yeah. It's, yeah. Their, it's their stuff. It's Just their the property. property. Yeah. 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 Their plants. Sure. And, I mean, but they wouldn't have to build a fence and then rebuild the fence every few years when it rotted away. Yeah. Yeah. Because this, this wow. gentleman apparently is in the minority. I was hoping I when I asked him what he thought of driving down Baldwin looking at those fences. Right. But he didn't do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was what they call a leading question, but it didn't work out. A long time ago, someone taught me, never ask a question of a witness you don't know the answer to. <laughs> that well, is true. Yeah, and they made the fences so much more appealing than they used to be. I mean, you know, you right. look at the variety of fences you can get now compared to... And, and, and they are right, because some of that, that vegetation is on the, the outer outside. Yeah. If it was all on the outside, it would be fine. You just wouldn't see it. But to complain about all the people running on the safety path, and I know Mr. Safety Path is right down over there. <laughs> uh, that's you. And, and, and you love safety, safety paths. I know you do. And, and they're good. And to have complaint, people are running past my house. Your neighbors, those are your neighbors. I'm just invite them in for a coffee or something once in a while. You know? Do you have something, Mr. Williams? Uh, I want to get back on the agenda. No, uh, please. Okay. Hey. You want to watch a football game? That's what you want to do. Well, I don't want Tammy hollering at me for going past an hour because we pay every 15 minutes for the. <laughs> thing. Who does? Oh, us? We don't get paid more, do we? No. The transcriptionist does. We get banged. For, oh. No. All right. No, that's a good conversation. No, I, seriously, we need it. We need it. But we need to get something back from uh, follow up on our. Ordinance committee, and if I remember, maybe I'll dig up that tree ordinance and read it, see what it, what it really says, and see if we can spin yeah. something into that. That'd be that'd be good. Yeah, that'd be good. Oh, I, I see we have a note in here about the, no meeting on uh, January twenty fourth. So I want to make a motion to cancel the January twenty fourth zoning board of appeals meeting due to a lack of agenda items. Move supported. All in favor? Aye. 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 Canceled. Let's jump back up for one second. We've got a copy of the annual report. Um, did I read that this is going to be requiring a motion to send it up to the Board of uh, Trustees? Yes. Okay, did anybody see anything in there that they, I mean, I don't remember all of everything, but I didn't see anything that was obviously out of line. No, I, I really think there don't. was 54 cases on fences last year. Wow. <laughs> Speaking They're of fences, committee, right? yeah. we got to get, we got to do something. We we have to do something. Yeah. We do. Yeah. You're the front line. What? You guys are the front line. They say when something keeps coming back to you. Well, right. we had the same problem with, with uh, the sign ordinance. We got that corrected with the uh, uh, EMCs and a couple other things. Mm -hmm. All right. If everybody is okay with the annual report, we yes. accept the motion. We accept and file, or whatever those words are. We have a motion by Mr. Walker, supported by Mrs. Danaskis. Please call the roll. Tony Cook? Yes. Diane Danaskis? Yes. Don Walker? Yes. Mike Flood? Yes. Ann Durham? Yes. So moved. Next, under communications, we don't have any public. We have memo regarding the cancellation of the 24th. Mr. Flood got that. I had already spoken about um, memo regarding the recording of the ZBA meetings. It sounds a lot better tonight, like maybe they've gotten ahead of where the problem was. Uh, we have a memo of proposed meeting dates here with us tonight. They'd like some action on that, I believe. Uh, no, that's already taken care of. Oh, it is? That, uh, yeah, that was already approved at the board level. Okay, good. Yep, we took care of that in the December meeting. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's been done. Mm -hmm. um, Information from Giffel's Webster regarding safety and site design. Education. Education. Did it come? Did it come out with the packet tonight? 
Uh, it's in the, uh, yeah, it's in your packet. Okay. Uh, all, all the information there, if you get a hold of uh, Lynn. Okay. Mm -hmm. And information regarding winter 2022 citizen planner via Zoom training. Is that the one that told me I okay. needed to get on it? Yeah, and... I just saw that too. Okay. Yeah. So we've all got that to do apparently before mm -hmm. March, I think. Anything else from anybody? Except a motion to adjourn. So moved. Oh, oh. Can I say something? Please. I know, I know we have a time limit. I rescind that. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, my, my, my second favorite thing I do in my life, other than the ZBA, is the library. Oh, yeah. And we have our book sale is next weekend, maybe. Uh, we are having a great deal of difficulty getting volunteers uh, to work for that sale. And when I say work, I'm not talking about physical work, sitting there, taking money, asking, answering questions, things of that nature. Uh, whether the, it's, we, we haven't figured out whether it's the cold, whether it's the COVID cases increasing. Uh, we are hurting badly for, for helpers. So we're having a meeting tomorrow. One of the things on the agenda tomorrow is to postpone the book sale. We hate to do it, but we might do it. So if you, you, any, if you, any of you who like, would like to, or know anybody that would like to, there is a, pardon me, Mr. Computer, sign up genius, is that what I'm going to say that right? For, the, for that library, for that thing on the, on the World Wide Web somewhere. And uh, so if you can look at that and volunteer a couple hours. And what is the date of that? So? It's, well, that's, we don't even know if we're going to cut back the hours. It, it's next week. The main, the main days are, will be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The 18th, 19th, and 20th, I believe. Um, and, uh, but there's some setup stuff and things, and we're even having trouble getting high school kids, which I know is our biggest. So because, well, we don't know why, but it's, we, had, we had a conversation today, and we're going to decide tomorrow what to do probably. And uh, so even if we uh, put it, put, bump it back a month or something, uh, keep in mind for next time. There we go. I'm done. So you said, from any head board members. Volunteering, you said people ask questions. I mean, I, would, I can take money and sell books or whatever, but I would have no information. Are, about e Diane, I can tell you are eminently qualified for any one of our <laughs> positions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's on, I just go to the library. That, that sign site, of genius list. Or, or you've got my phone number. Call me if you have any questions. Okay. Thank okay, you. we will. We have a motion to adjourn, and I will support. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're done. Thank you. It's eight oh two.